There is power in the name, the name of Jesus. If the words won't come out because you're too afraid to pray, just say Jesus. Whisper it now or shout it out. However it comes out, he hears your cry. Out of nowhere he will come. You've got to believe it. He will rescue you. Just call out to the way, the truth, and the life. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There is power in the name, the name of Jesus. If the words won't come because you're too afraid to pray, there is just one name strong enough to save. There is just one name. There is just one name, Jesus. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There's still power in the name, in the name of Jesus. If the words won't come because you're too afraid to pray, if the words won't come and you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. There's something in a name. No question. Uh, parents are, sometimes are obsessed, and rightfully so. Their unborn child's coming into the world, whether it's the first, second, or 15th, it doesn't matter. I don't know if anyone has 15 children out there, but if you do, we'll pray for you, for sure. <laughs> uh, but you're, you're very selective. You have the 100,001 best baby names. Uh, baby name book, right here, and available at your local Onslow County Library. Right here, the amazing baby name book, a possibly helpful and slightly amusing guide from A to Z. It's parents, again, they're, they're serious about names, no question. And you have to consider, they go to books, they go to resources, they go to Google, they go to the internet, they go online, looking for just the perfect name for their child. Something different, something out of the mainstream, something special, something unique. Some have to consider whether it's a first or second. You know, Paul Potenza the, the second. Oh, that's a scary thought, but Paul, <laughs> Paul Potenza one's enough. Or first or second, is it a junior? Are you going to give him a nickname? You know, TJ or CJ or, or something. And, and again, you have to consider what that name or that nickname is going to be when they get to grade school or middle school or high school, because sometimes that name will, will morph or evolve into something where other kids may make fun of it. So you have to think about the possibilities. Sometimes it's tra traditional names. We name our descendants after our father or grandfather, or there's a, we pick the name of the, of the grandfather and the grandmother and bring them to whatever. We bring them together and we come up with a traditional family name. Our names, I'm just gonna, here's, here's honest. Jacqueline, our oldest child, the French feminine of Jacques comes from the Hebrew Jacob, which means Sir Planter or May God Protect. We're going to go with the latter. I'm going to give my daughter credit, May God Protect. And Ryan's name, Little King. How we know that was a kiosk at the mall. There's someone was selling all these certificates for all the baby names under the sun, and it, had, it was really fancy, really nice calligraphy, really nice off framing, all that. What your child's name is and what it means from whatever language. Now, we picked opposite initials. Ryan is Ryan Logan Bender after Becky's initials, Rebecca Lynn, and, and uh, Jacqueline is Jacqueline Aaron Bender, J-E-B after my, my initials, James, I won't tell you my middle name, I get made fun of that all the time, J I'll just put it at James E. Bender, you can ask me later and laugh privately in the foyer. <laughs> Even Megan Court, where we live, the Hebrew word for shield, in the language of Sanskrit, engrossed, or Elias, which Elijah means the Lord is my God. We did not know that when we moved in, but I knew it in preparing for the sermon. Becky called me and said, hey, you want to know what Megan means? I go, sure, honey. I'd love to know what Megan means. So there you go, how important names are. Resources, quickly. These are available here, right here in this building if you need. Tony Evans, the power of God's names. Okay, Henry Garropy. 100 Portraits of Christ. Rose Publishing, Names of the Holy Spirit. Ann Spangler, Praying the Names of God. We use this in California a lot. Nathan Stone, The Names of God. And two by Elmer L. Towns, My Father's Names and the Names of Jesus. Turn with me in the scriptures, if you will. I want you to turn to some verses here. If, First Chronicles chapter 16, 8 through 12. These are not on the PowerPoint, so you need to put your eyes on, on them in your Bible 
or your iPad or your smart device. First Chronicles chapter 16, 8 through 12. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds which, we has done, which he has done, his marvels and the judgments from his mouth. Turn to Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. I tried to kind of put these in order of the books as they appear so it makes it easier to, easier to look up. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sounds very similar to Chronicles. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders, glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels, and the judgments uttered by his mouth. Now you may think, well, that's exactly the same thing. Well, the best way to learn, I've learned this from my mother who was a teacher and other teachers, is what? Repetition, repetition, repetition. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. Again, very similar. And in that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Cry aloud and shout for joy. O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Now, a simple rule of Bible study and Bible interpretation, if God says it once, it automatically makes it important. If you, he reemphasizes it two and three and four times, what does that tell you? It, it's really important. It's really important to know him. It's really important to praise him. It's really important to make his name known. It's really important to exalt him and tell all peoples about our Father and about his only begotten Son, and about his beloved Spirit. That's our privilege. That's our grace to participate in the eternal scheme of redemption as ministers of reconciliation and ambassadors for Christ to go out there as we began the service. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Let his glory be exalted. Let his glory be exalted in all the earth. No matter what you're going through today, you can call on his name. You can praise him. You can make him known, not only in your, as, as Matt did a communion. Yes, we did a self-examination. It's personal. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Calling on his name is personal. I don't know how you feel, but the fact that an everlasting Heavenly Father, our Creator God, sent his Son to shed his blood and to sacrifice his body and come out of the tomb so that I, I, me can have a personal relationship with the God of heaven. Amen. That's humbling. That's exciting. That's uh, abundant. That's joyful. Call it what you will. He determined before he made Adam and Eve and before he said, let there be light, there was a redemptive plan to save you and me. That's right. That is mind boggling. <laughs> that is soul stirring. That is heart uplifting. I, I don't know how you cut it, but you can't leave here without being excited and blessed knowing that God loves you. Right. And if there ever was a time that we need to hear it over and over and over again, it's now. You are significant. You are special. You are needed. God wants to save you no matter what you've done. No matter who you are, the redemptive plan is for you. And there is a name above all names that can save you. Last one is Romans 10, 12 through 15. Romans 10, 12 through 15. Paul says by inspiration of the Spirit, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And now they believe on him in whom they have not heard. And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news 
of good things. Now you may think in your mind, David French and Lori are coming next week, and those are missionary and a missionary wife that we support as we should. It's one of the most remarkable works of the Church of Christ on the planet, as Matt already alluded to and said directly. But they're not the only missionaries. We can be missionaries. We need to be missionaries. And I know it's a cliche. I get it. And David may even say it when he comes. Any heart without Jesus is a mission field. And any heart with Jesus is a missionary. And if Jesus has saved you today through the gospel of his son, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and you've obeyed that gospel through hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being immersed, you're a qualified missionary. You need to go out with the message to people who are lost, to a lost and dying world, and give them the opportunity to be saved. Just like last week when Robin preached from John 3, masterful approach, by the way, and he did not pay me to say that. He did not pay me to say that. It's unsolicited. The fact that when Nicodemus asked, what must I do to enter the kingdom? And Jesus initially said in John 3, 3, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And then must I go back in my mother's womb? In verse 5, you must be born of what? Water and the spirit to enter the kingdom of God. The same, uh, Jesus said that in, in John. Paul wrote it, in, or Luke wrote it in Acts 2. What was the response to the first invitation? Repent and be immersed, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Later in Titus, Titus 3, Paul said you'll be saved by the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And later in 1 John 5, it says the Spirit and the water and the blood, these three agree. So whether it's Jesus, whether it's Luke, whether it's Paul, or whether it's John, the theme is the same. You're only going to be saved when you, re when you have hear and believe, have faith, you confess Jesus is Lord, you repent of your sins, and you reenact the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Now, that was a side point. Let's go back to regular scheduled programming about the name. Okay? The identity of your name in the Old Testament did two things. Or the, it gave you an identity, but more important, it talked about your essence of what you were or what you will become. Here's some examples. Abram meant the father is exalted, but when his name was changed, what does it mean? The father of many nations. Sarai means my lady or my princess. It was a pure expression of Hebrew adoration and praise for just one family. But when it became Sarah, what? The mother of many nations. Adam, the name, meant man or humankind. Eve, the mother of the living, to breathe, to give life, etc. Again, identity and essence, identity and purpose. Jacob, surplanter or overreach. Name change, Israel, and Hebrew, Yisrael. God preserves. Now, modern names for guys and girls in Hebrew, Izzy or Ray. That's the short for Israel. Moses, a Hebrew verb, to pull out or draw out out of water. Remember, little Moses was pulled out of what? The basket of reeds in the water. Joshua, the Hebrew name, Yeshua, means what? God is deliverance. And lastly, we sang, Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name. The angel, we assume, is Gabriel. When you put the Gospels together, Matthew 1, speaking to Joseph, said what? And you, Joseph, shall, she sh you're talking about Mary, and she shall bring forth a son, and you, Joseph, will call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. So the name Jesus means Savior. The title Lord means Master or Sovereign, and the title Christ means the Anointed or Chosen One of God. Again, preacher alliteration, Sovereign, Savior, and Select One of God. 
So if you wonder about the not only the identity of our Savior, but his essence and his purpose, he's there to be our sovereign, he's there to be our Savior, and he's certainly the select one of God. Now how does this translate to us? What really do we have in Jesus' name? Would you be free from the burden of sin? What? There's power, yes, in the blood, but who shed the blood? Jesus. You want to know this morning, if you're coming in here and you're shackled by something, an addiction, a bad habit, maybe you're dragging around sin from the past. Because I've heard people say, yes, I know I'm forgiven, but God doesn't appreciate how depraved or how bad I was. So maybe there's an acceptance of forgiveness, but that sound you hear is that ball and chain being drug across the ground as you drag it through life, and God says, break free from the chain. You are forgiven. Past, present, and future sins, you're forgiven. Claim what I've given you. Understand my amazing grace. Understand my rich and abundant mercy. Understand my unconditional love. Understand my complete and total forgiveness through the blood of my son and the indwelling of my spirit. That is yours, my child. Claim it. Live it. Share it. Teach it. Don't deny it. Don't shortcut it. Don't shortchange it. To steal an army phrase, Al, for Jesus, be all that you can be. Be all that you can be for him. Because all that, he broke all the chains. For you, it, he broke them all or he can break them all. If you're carrying a chain, ball and chain this morning, it's time to get out whatever the, the soldering device or the flame, whatever you break, flamethrower or what the, uh, if it's thin enough, you get the bowl cutters. If the, if the links are thin enough, you know, you're talking to Bob Vila here. This, right? Daryl may know what to do. I, I might not be. That's, but whatever device you need this morning, that device, that person is Jesus. Him we sing, all hail the power of what? Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Okay? Now, what really do we have in Jesus' name? John 14, 6, what is a famous statement Jesus made, what? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one, I repeat, no one comes to the Father but through me. A verse that goes with this, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must, not shall or should, by which we must be saved. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. And I'm, some of you probably are guessing when you saw that title, what's in a name, you know we were eventually going to end up here in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians 2. Starting verse 5, Paul writes, Have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The name that is above every name. No matter what book you go to as a parent, no matter what internet source you go, there's no other name higher than Jesus. There's no other name that will save other than Jesus. So what do we have in his name? We have power. One of my favorite verses, Ephesians 3, Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine, according to the power that works within us. When Paul, Philippians 4, a familiar verse, he said, I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me. 
There's power in the name. Number two, there's providence. You're going to see in a minute the, the alliteration here, all the, the P's that come up. Providence. We get to participate in God's plan. Because of the name of Jesus, we are participants in the eternal scheme of redemption. Romans 8, 28, God causes all things to do what? Work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. We went over this in Bible class. We are called how? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 4, verse 15. Paul said, we called you to this through our gospel that you may know the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. For you are what? A chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness by the gospel into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. For you once had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That humbles me and excites me and gives me marching orders and, a, and a, I want to step through the, the wall for Jesus when I know I've been allowed to participate in his eternal plan. By his providence, he uses me, as we learned in, in 1 Corinthians 1, even in my weakness. And Paul asked to have the thorn in the flesh removed three times. God said no. And the answer was, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is perfected in weakness. <coughs> Number three, peace. Paul said, be anxious for nothing. And this is, this is easier quoted than done. I understand that. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and what? And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You ever think about that his peace, peace is unfathomable? It's by, beyond my understanding and compassion, but guess what? I still am blessed to receive it. That's right. I may not understand it. I can't figure that out, but I have it anyways. Matthew 11, come to me, all who weary and are heavy laden. What's the promise? And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am hum gentle and humble in heart, and the other promises, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 1 Peter 5, casting what? All your anxieties upon him, because he cares for you. Number four, we have plenty in provision. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what? And all these things shall be added to you. Philippians 4, 19, and my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So we have plenty. We have provision. We have purpose. We have been put here to exalt the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 10, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do what? Do all to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 9, we make it our ambition or we make it our, our aim to please him, whether at home in the body or absent from it. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul said, I, I, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God to do what? Present. Present your bodies as living sacrifices acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. And a, a verse I know a lot of us are familiar with because of the way we pray and how we end it and what we do, Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. We have a purpose. We have a, a Father and a Son and a Spirit who can put spring in our step and cause us to get up in the morning to know that we have the privilege and the grace of being living sacrifices. We can get up and go out to the world with the armor on, prepared, praying at all times in the spirit, ready to take on Satan whatever he throws our way. And lastly, I alluded to it earlier, this is personal. Yes, it's for, it's for God desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy. I understand that. 
But if Jesus didn't come for anybody else, and you've heard it from preachers from time immemorial, he came for you individually, and he came for me individually. He died for you, and he died for me. Again, I, you, you can take those the scriptures. I will, I, if you'll, if you'll turn with me to 1 Timothy 2. That's the one I will read from this list. 1 Timothy 2, I'm going to read 1 through 7, not just 1 through 6. Paul says to Timothy, first of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator also between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. The debt canceled. The ransom's paid for you and for me. And this makes the name of Jesus personal. Okay? Now, invitation. Both of those sections, Joel, which is quoted by Peter in Acts 2 in the first sermon. Summing it up, Joel said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? will be saved. So it begs the question, how do I call on his name? The same thing Ananias said to Saul in Acts 22. Why do you delay? Arise and be immersed and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Let me submit to you, there are ways to call on his name this morning. You can call on his name. If you've never called on the name of Jesus as your sovereign or Lord, as your savior, or as a select or chosen one of God, you just need to step out on faith and come forward at what we call the invitation song in the Churches of Christ. Come forward to the front pew. We'll take your confession. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes resulting in righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made resulting in salvation. So that's, that's the first way. You leave here calling on his name in prayer. Calling on his name as you, as you discuss and study with brothers and sisters. Calling on his name as you study God's word and apply it to your life. St call on his name as you go talk to others at work about redemption and salvation. And, 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 and I don't know about Ron or Robin, but I still get butterflies when I talk to someone who's a cold contact out in public about being saved and about spiritual things. It, it's not a nonchalant thing or just, oh, you know, I, I get to talk about it. Because think about it. When you have the opportunity to share Jesus and salvation, for them, that's, an, that's a definite eternal moment. That could be a spiritually life-changing moment. And that can be very humbling and very scary for someone you don't know just to say, hey. You know, now, granted, I may have it easier as a preacher. They go, you know, what do you do? Well, I, the person say, well, I'm a, a bricklayer or I'm a doctor. What do you do? Well, I'm a preacher. And it's easy for me to talk about him because that, quote, unquote, in a sense, that that's my job. But what, whatever you do, whether you're unemployed, retired, or whatever your occupation is, to say, look, I would like the opportunity to share with you about my Savior. I would like the opportunity to study with you to what it means to be saved. I would like to present to you the way to get in the kingdom to be born of water and the spirit. That's not always easy. But there's several opportunities, that there's several ways to call on his name. This morning I do want to end with uh, another, uh, you've heard, the, I'm sure you've heard maybe this artist, Cece Winans. She had a song called Believe For It, and I just listened to it yesterday. Becky introduced me to it, and it's powerful, and it's fitting at this moment for invitation. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, we believe for it. You are the way. There seems to be no other way. 
We trust you, God, to have the final say. You do have the final say. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. You said it. I believe it. You accomplished it. It is done. If you're here this morning and you need the impossible made possible, and you may need the seemingly unbreakable to be broken, his name can do it. There's power in all those other things in his name. If you have a need to respond, and you want to serve the God who can move and break, and having already accomplished it through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, and you can become a victor over sin and death, because of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21, as we close, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Become his righteousness this morning. Come forward and it will help you if you're already a child of God you need help in prayer to kind of live in a manner worthy or live in a way to make that name proud. Come forward as we stand and sing.